Our panel is ready, and our panelists are ready. Michal, please start the panel discussion. Thank you very much, Olena, and thank you for this last presentation, which was a video presentation. But as we are everybody online, so the video presentations are also welcome. So now I'd like to uh, welcome in our panel our guests. So Daniel, James, and Carlo, which you already met during the presentations, but I also welcome Giorgio Cookies. So the extra guests on our panel welcome you here on our Thank online you. stage. So as we have a Hi, little George. bit. Hi, Hi, Betul. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. <laughs> So I see, I see that our uh, panelists know each other, even being from such a different country. <laughs> okay, I hope that you know life, not only from some online conference. No, no, it's a small world. It's a small person. Okay, when we talk about the world, let's start our discussion. Of course, I'd like to uh, ask the first question to uh, to. Georgios, you, as you haven't been on our presentation, uh, I'm really impressed about the, the uh, IT solutions which your company delivered. And the first question is, of course, now during the pandemic, when everything changed, everything is online, the companies, the factoring companies and SMEs are looking for the new solutions. Uh, how is this development? Now looks like how what what are the what are the results of the development in 2020 and what are the goals in 2021? Yes, uh, actually the factoring companies and uh, bank institutions that provide factoring and supply chain finance after uh, I would say the first shock of the pandemic, uh, they try to focus on uh, some more digitalized solution in order to uh, reshape uh, the model of, uh, of their work. Uh, there was a big challenge for this organization to change, let's say, the mindset and to succeed uh, in uh, a kind of innovation and uh, technology. Uh, because technology is there, it was there for the last uh, many years, but uh, people were a little bit reluctant to use it. Uh, I think digital transformation now is a must for uh, factoring institution and banking institution that provide such kind of solution to the SMEs and large corporates uh, because it is uh, the only way now with the new um, situation uh, to improve efficiency, generate more revenue and uh, deliver value to their customers. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, the same uh, topic as uh, Daniel is with us, and you also deliver, your company also delivers some great uh, uh, factoring. The question is how you change your product during this 2020 and what will be in 2021? Daniel, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we okay. hear you very well. Okay, super. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you, Michal. Um, we, what we what we did um, basically is exactly adopt that strategy of uh, providing the best user experience that that we can. So we we took our portal, and um, together with our clients and with uh, of course some of our own ideas, we we put it to a redesign, and uh, added more and more functionalities. Let's say. Uh, also to look at risk, uh, at, at risk indicators, uh, um, for example, that, that you can now you know, look at uh, as a decision maker, as a risk manager um, on your phone, for example, and making the access for, for prospects, so for the factoring clients, um, as easy as, as possible, uh, even, let's say, even, even easier with with the integration of, uh, let's say, things like OCR and, and, and things that we um, may, might have held back on uh, earlier, now we, we, we realize them. Um, and so, so this is, this is uh, one thing that we did. 
And uh, the, the other thing is that, that we are now thinking about adding even more AI to the, to the back end, uh, let's say, to, to have even more pattern recognition to, to tell uh, when a client uh, is running into problems uh, with more indicators or uh, to tell if an invoice is fraudulent or not. And um, yeah, so basically that's the, that's the gist of it. Uh, I would say, and but first, and and um, you might have we, we might talk about risk later, but uh, I think uh, just as a uh, I let's say uh, something that that we should maybe all think about. I think the challenge that we are facing now is not even a technological one, and and please, you know, uh, disagree with me on on, on this one, uh, but it's a conceptual one um, because we have to look at risk. Uh, in a much different way in this, in this, let's say, in this challenging and uncertain landscape, uh, for example. So uh, we are paving the way to have a lot of flexibility in, in, in pattern recognition, for example. Uh, but um, what will these patterns be? Th that is the question. Uh, uh, which, um, let's say, which area of business are still viable after the pandemic and, and which will suffer long-term consequences, uh, for example. Um, and when we figure out that, then we can put the really powerful technology into place, uh, let's say. Okay, so which directions, because it's, I'd like to push you to answer this question maybe more, what direction of the technology development for SMEs you see in 2021? So what will be this, biggest challenge, what will be this direction of technology development? Mm -hmm. um, um, should I? Uh, so, so the yeah. direction... Uh, uh, I, I think um, that PSD2 can help us a great way of, of dealing with this. Uh, because um, what we need is uh, more data definitely more data we we don't know all the directions like i like i tried to outline in my in my uh, presentation but uh, what we need is more flexibility and, and uh, more data uh, for example on a transactional basis then we can put on uh, to, together with you know the great minds of, of of risk managers and leading senior risk guys um we can put that we can put that to the test and uh, develop new models uh, for risk to, to see which SMEs we can still finance and, and which, you know, which, which we can, which business models are still sustainable. And then we can, and like, like Betu uh, also outlined, AI, for example, is, is going to become even more important because when we have all these, 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 these risk models in place, then of course we can automate them. But uh, yeah. I think now it would be, it would be quite challenging uh, to say this is the right model for the next five years or something like that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to address a question to Betul. Uh, dear Betul, you as a, uh, as a factoring open account receiving finance uh, association, you have a really cross-border view of what is going on on the market. If you could just say us how is your opinion, what will happen in 2021, mostly from the perspective of the SMEs and SME customers of factoring products? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, uh, well, when we talk about the global impact of this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Of course, digitalization uh, came onto the table of the big banks, uh, mid-sized banks, small factoring companies. Uh, besides different ways of evolving in the bank on the digitalization, the pandemic also highlighted differences in regional and global policies by governments that the global banks and all the financial ecosystem must adapt to. We ant anticipate that the, both the receivable finance industry and associated risk will improve because these changes 
uh, digitalization will undoubtedly prove usable in developing new products, services, and controls that will, that will ultimately attract more clients to the receivable finance market. But I think a new wave of industry changes coming to the world of international trade. As uh, Daniel mentioned, uh, I think Daniel mentioned that the DLT and non-DLT projects are coming to leverage new and uh, exciting technologies to help uh, bring trade into the new digital era. Uh, new projects and uh, consortia from the, all aspects of the industry, from financing, uh, from different industries to shipping to insurance are generating innovative approaches to the challenges. But these projects are uh, disrupting many of old ways uh, of operating uh, like uh, artificial intelligence by bringing the new ones, new uh, solutions on the table. But I think uh, all we need is a fully integrated system with the global standards because we are all talking, of course, the first step is the talking about the new digital solutions by the um, service providers. Uh, it's going to be implemented by the big banks or middle size or the small, uh, even for yeah. the small factory yeah. companies. But we need to, all the global standardization for it for the full integration of the system. I think we, we will see this kind of standardization. As, a, as an FCI, we are also supporting the government's regulators for, for adopting the new technologies. But of course, it will take time. It, 2021 is probably we will see, but, but we have some more time, I think, for this one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, now I'd like to address a question to Jamie. Uh, you, as a, um, also international and uh, IT solution company, not only, but also, uh, what are your uh, view to 2021 according to the development of the systems for financial institutions? What are the, the most important development uh, goals for you and for your customers? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, first, I think this digital acceleration, which has, um, um, well, started uh, with a bit enforcement, of course, is non-stoppable. And, uh, of course, as, as a tech provider, if you're asking me, um, I think that should have been started, well, decades ago already. And, um, yeah, I think many are appreciating and preferring this kind of doing business already with each other. And for those who don't, I think there's still enough possibilities to be helped with alternative ways. Because I think by now, the vast majority of the population is used to, for example, and that's just an example to, to use, to use, for example, video calling or, um, um, yeah, anybody I think is getting a video calling expert in, cert in a certain way. Um, so I think that I, what I believe is that this will become a more mainstream way of living. And more trust is now, uh, I think, on the fact that things will remain working, although in a different way, of course. And if I have a look at ourselves, at Topicus, we are, of course, kind of an SME as well. And our first day of working from home was at March 16th, somewhere. And I bet that if I would have suggested to collectively start working from home at the beginning of, well, Feb, uh, my board would have said that we uh, could close the shop. And yeah, by, by now my board is almost preaching working from home as long as we continue taking good care of each other. So um, yeah, as for SMEs, I think that they have to think in new bosses, business models to survive. I think that's one of the key thing, what we all, including financial institutions, debt advisors, like any who could support the SME, uh, um, well, area, um, that's one of the inevitable proceedings from here on. That's, that's what I think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As uh, we have just one minute to go, just one question. Just, just, do you like, Carlo, something to add to our discussion? As... What I'd like to add, because I'm on the other side of the, um, uh, of the spectrum, because we are a debt advisor and we uh, realize... Exactly, that's why I, add you, I ask you. Yeah, this, what I'd like to add is um, that um, the most important thing to get more uh, efficient in, in, in is to, and I heard it before, 
is to get a, a global um, um, uh, interest in data and, and make it make it work globally. Uh, because what we see in the Netherlands, um, there is a lot of different data, so it makes it more harsh to uh, make a digital uh, collection of money and funding. So that will be uh, the biggest uh, goal for the couple of years. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And thank you all, especially for the presentations, which were the first part of our our panel. And now thank you for the small discussion and uh, what is most important, finger crossed for the health of you and for our company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you all. Bye. Thank you, thank Michael. You, bye, you all. Yes, thank you, thank bye, you all. Bye.